Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to get rid of that ugly background. We're going to go ahead and put it and replace it with something more vibrant, a little bit better. And I've got this picture right here from Michael Photography and I'm using it with the Creative Commons Flickr licensing. And I've gone ahead and I've taken the background and replaced it with the Union flag. And as you know, the Union flag is the flag that's flown over the land and the Union Jack is the one that is flown over the sea. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command-0 so that you can see the entire picture there. And it does look pretty good. And I'm going to show you how to erase the background of your picture and replace it with another background. So let's go ahead and grab these layers and delete them so that we have our original image. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a distracting background right here. Now the first thing that you might want to try is the Magic Eraser tool. Now, why is the Magic Eraser tool? It's great if you have a white background and you just want to click it and get rid of all that white, and then the person's standing there. Problem is, is that most of the time when we take pictures and we want to get rid of the background, it's because they're ugly and distracting and we want to erase them and put something else cool behind them. If I use my Magic Eraser tool, when I click on it, it's going to erase all the colors that are very similar. So if I click on this area, it's going to get rid of green. Okay, that's wonderful until we get down here where the jacket and the concrete are the same color. And then it's going to start chewing away at our jacket. So it's probably not such a good area, way to do it. Let's go ahead and do Command Z to get all those areas back. The other thing that you noticed when I did this magic eraser was that it unlocked my background and created a layer out of it. Not a big deal. I'm going to change this now to the background eraser. We could do it that way and we could sit there and erase the background and once again it unlocked our layer creating a layer zero and then I have to sit here and try and trace all around him and that's a pain in the neck as well so I'm gonna hit a command Z and not do it that way I think the most effective way is to come over here and click on our quick selection tool right here and what we're gonna do is we're going to make a selection and mask it so the first thing that we need to do is we need to do a command J or control J and we need to duplicate our layer then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the option bar we're gonna make sure that we have the little plus selected right there and then we're going to grab hold of him and there's our image and you're just gonna keep selecting until he's selected now of course you're gonna grab a little bit too much and in some areas you're not gonna grab enough so just keep going till you kinda have him selected fairly well got his ears got his hair okay maybe a little bit too much now we're gonna go into the option bar and we're gonna click the minus because we need to get rid of some of these areas right here and does a pretty good job of getting rid of those just keep going maybe click a little bit right there and now I have to do some cleanup now the easiest way to do cleanup is to click and hold on the click quick selection tool and select the selection brush tool. Now go to your option bar and make sure that it is in the mask mode so that you can see which areas that you need to clean up. Now what we're going to have to do is any areas that we forgot we're going to have to paint in and any areas that we have too much we're going to have to erase. Now this one here just think of it as the opposite of the way that you want to do it. So anything that is add to selection is going to be erasing. So when I go over here I'm going to be erasing these areas over by his jacket which are the folds that you can see in his jacket right there. Any other areas that I might have included or not included over here we're erasing and that's pretty much it. Now we need to switch it over here to the subtract to selection and what that's going to do is that's actually going to paint in those areas which we didn't include so I'm going to go ahead and paint in those areas right there until I have all those areas painted in now I've got one little one above his head right there and I've got a little bit over here by his jeans right there and that's looking pretty good right there. Might want to use the bracket tools, which is right next to the P, or if you're in another country, you're going to have to look at it and see where your 
keyboard shortcuts are for your brushes. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint in this area because that is not included with his pants. That's actually part of the background. I'm going to color those areas in. And once we're done with that, I'm going to go back to the quick selection tool right here and I'm going to put it back on quick selection as you can see there are the marching ants. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to refine our edge to see how good of a job we did in selecting him. So I'm going to click on the refine edge and I'm going to select the third one over which is the black or the one that is white. Then you can see which areas you still need to clean up. Now I did a fairly good job if I wanted to expand or contract our selection right there as you can see it's getting a little bit larger or it's getting a little bit smaller here depending upon whether or not I'm expanding or contracting you can add a little bit of a feather if you want but it kinda gives it that blurry look and you can also smooth the little jaggies all the way across there when you're done you're gonna select OK and that gives you the marching ants now to make this magic work we're gonna go down into the layers palette we're going to click the layer mask and I'm going to go ahead and click that. Woohoo! Wasn't that great? It got rid of our background. Unfortunately it didn't because I have a duplicate layer here and I have to turn the visibility off. So there we have it. I've just erased the background using the layer mask tool. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to add our background, the replacement background that we want. So I'm going to grab hold of this picture and I'm going to drag it on top of that image and then I'm going to use the move tool kind of move this around to where I want it and then use the resizing handles right there to resize my image and kind of move it around until I'm happy with where it's at when I'm done I'm gonna either click the green tick box right there or I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard we still can't see it because the wallpaper is on the top layer so I'm going to drag that in between the two layers and there we have it. We have the layer mask and then we've replaced our background. Now one of the reasons why I used a layer mask is because if I made any mistakes in this area right here, let's say in the jacket, I could go back in and either paint with black or paint with white to either get rid of or add back in the areas where I made a mistake. Now I'm going to use the command plus that is a shortcut key for zooming in and I want to show you that I did make a little bit of a mistake over here by the jacket. You can see that it's not looking very good over here. So what I need to do is I need to reset my foreground and background colors by clicking the D on the keyboard. You can also use the X for swapping the colors around the black and white right there and then we're going to pick a brush. We want to make sure that we have a very um, hard brush right here and then we're going to click this option right here and we want to keep the spacing down to one. Click on this layer mask make sure that it's on white. I'm going to hit the reverse button right there and we're going to paint with white right there and as you can see it's going to start bringing that jacket back from the dead. And there we have it right there. One of the reasons why we use this is because you don't want to go in there and cut the image out. If you do cut the image out, the problem is, is that you, if you cut a little bit too much, you can't put it back unless you're using a layer mask. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash. I hope you like that. I hope you like being able to replace your background and also use a layer mask for getting rid of unwanted backgrounds. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos, like, pass the link around to your friends. Cheers!